there is a long tradition of phonocentrism in the West. The roots of this tradition can be traced to Plato, who clearly preferred orality over writing. Among those who walked in the footsteps of Plato was Jean Jacques Rousseau, who, in his essay on the origin of languages, essay on the origin of languages, clearly articulated phenocentric beliefs. Ferdinand de Saussure, in a course in general linguistics, attempted to see language and writing as two distinct systems of signs or semiotics and expressed a clear preference for language or spoken language. Leonard Bloomfield declared that writing is not language at all. He held that writing is not language but merely a way of recording language and by language he of course meant spoken language. Phanocentrism is the tendency to claim that speech is inherently superior to writing. The belief that speech is primary and that writing is derivative lies at the heart of phanocentrism. Phanocentrism tends to privilege speech over writing. To believe that speech is more immediate than writing, more rich than writing. Derrida launched several assaults on phonocentrism. He extensively critiqued the writings of phonocentric authors, including Saussure and Rousseau. Derrida believed that the Western intellectual tradition was fundamentally phonocentric, that Western philosophy, literature, linguistics, anthropology were all extremely phonocentric. He held that this phonocentrism is an exemplification of the logocentrism of Western philosophy. Put very briefly, logocentrism is the belief that there is a reality, there is a realm of reality, independent of language, and that language is capable of fully capturing this reality. According to Derrida, speech is no better than writing, but speech is assigned that role by societies that seek to find a transcendental form of expression, an expression that allows one to express transcendental truths, supposedly. Derrida constantly challenged the prioritizing of the acoustic or phonic dimension or the graphic or the written dimension. Derrida coined the word difference to demonstrate the hollowness of those ideologies that privilege the phonic or the graphic. 
Derrida replaced the letter E in the French word, which means to defer, D-E-F-E-R, and also to defer, D-I-F-F-E-R, to create the word difference. The word is not audible because it has the same pronunciation as its original, but is visible because it is spelt differently from its original. As I have said, Derrida replaced the E in the original French word with the letter A to create the French word difference. The point that Derrida wants to make is that the prioritizing of spoken language over the written form is absurd. Unlike most Western philosophers, Derrida identified the essence of language with writing. Language is not merely a sort of writing, but a feasibility, a potentiality founded on the general possibility of writing. It is in this context that Derrida coined the term Archie writing. Archie here means origin. Archie writing refers to a kind of writing that precedes both speech and writing. Archie writing is a language that is already there before we use it. Without Archie writing, there will be no speech and there will be no writing. The challenge that Derrida mounted against Fano-centrism, the privileging of the spoken word over the written word, was successful to some extent, was successful to the extent that it succeeded in shaking the long Western tradition of Fernocentrism to the core.